Hi, my name is Ray. Me and my friends Dodi, Mimi, and Faffles, we love to come to this wonderful library. Over there, on that great book, is Grand Old Holy. She's really old and wise and tells us wonderful stories. When she's awake, that is. Hi, Holy. It's Christmas time, and we so want to hear a lovely story. Yeah, story time! Well, let me tell you the story of the gingerbread man. Once upon a time, a little old woman and a little old man lived in a cottage. One day, they were hungry, and the little old woman decided to bake a gingerbread man. She rolled out the dough and cut out a very nice gingerbread man. She gave him currants for eyes and chocolate chips for buttons. What a fine-looking gingerbread man he was! But as soon as the little old woman opened the oven door, out jumped the gingerbread man and ran out of the open window. The little old woman and the little old man ran after the gingerbread man. Stop! They yelled, but the gingerbread man ran even faster, chanting. Run, run, as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. The gingerbread man ran through the yard and passed a pig. Stop! The pig snorted. I want to eat you. But the gingerbread man ran even faster, chanting. Run, run, as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. The pig joined the chase, but the gingerbread man ran too fast for them. The gingerbread man passed a cow by the barn. Stop! The cow mooed. I want to eat you. But the gingerbread man ran even faster, chanting. Run, run as fast as you can. Cow joined the chase, but the gingerbread man was too fast for them. The gingerbread man passed a horse in the field. Stop! The horse neighed. I want to eat you. But the gingerbread man ran even faster, chanting. Run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. The horse joined the chase. Then the gingerbread man reached a river, but he didn't know how to swim. A sly and hungry fox saw the gingerbread man and said, Jump on my tail and I'll take you across the river. The gingerbread man thought to himself, I'll be safe on his tail. So he jumped on the fox's tail and they started across the river. Halfway across the river, the fox barked. You're too heavy for my tail. Jump on my back. So the gingerbread man jumped on the fox's back. Soon, the fox said, You're too heavy for my back. Jump onto my nose. So the gingerbread man jumped on the fox's nose. But as soon as they reached the river bank, the fox flipped the gingerbread man into the air, snapped his mouth shut, and ate the gingerbread man. And that was the end of the gingerbread man. Oh, now I'm hungry. Dodi, I feel really bad for the poor gingerbread man. I like the story. I am glad you did. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Hi, my name is Ray. Me and my friends Dodi, Mimi, and Faffles, we love to come to this wonderful library. Over there, on that great book, is Grand Old Holy. She's really old and wise and tells us wonderful stories, when she's awake, that is. Oh, and we love to sing and dance. Rushing through the snow In a one-horse open sleigh Over the fields we go Laughing all the way Bells on walk till ring Make our spirits bright 
Hi Holy, do you think you could tell us another one of your Christmas stories? I am bored and I am not allowed to play outside today. That's because you've been naughty Dodie. Be careful or you won't get any Christmas presents. Well Dodie, if you promise to be good, I will tell you a story. I promise. This is the story about a little girl's Christmas. It was Christmas Eve and a little girl had just hung up her stocking by the fireplace. Still, she wasn't satisfied. I wish I could see Santa myself. Why don't you go then? Said a tiny voice close by her. So close that little girl fairly jumped when she heard it. Just try on these shoes and take this light in your hand and you'll find your way. The tiny voice said. So little girl looked down on the hearth and there were two little shoes side by side and a little spark of light close to them. Away went little girl wearing the shoes, bright light in hand, higher and higher until she looked like a star up in the sky. Soon little girl noticed that there was a bright light all around her and a path right in front of her leading up a hill to a big house. Something told her that this was Santa's house. Just as she neared the steps, the door opened and there stood a funny little man with slender little legs and a roly-poly stomach. He pulled off his little peaked red cap, smiled the broadest kind of a smile and said, Merry Christmas! Come in, come in! So in went little girl. Inside was a nice fire, all glowing, and all around her were bundles and boxes and piles of toys and games, all ready and waiting to be loaded into Santa's big sleigh. Soon, she could hear someone laughing loudly and talking in a big jovial voice. Straight away, she knew it was Santa. Little girl wondered if Santa would notice her, but he saw her at once and said, Bless my soul, who is this? And where did you come from? Oh, I'm little girl, and I wanted so much to see Santa. She said, Ho, 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 laughed Santa. Now that's very nice, but I'm in such a hurry. I must be on my way at once, else I'll never reach that first chimney top by midnight. Is there anything that you would like, little girl? And good old Santa put his big warm hand on little girl's curls. She smiled back and said, Oh, Santa, could I ride down to earth with you? Well, shall we take her, little elves, little fairies? Good reindeer? Santa asked. Oh yes, let's take her. She's a good little girl. They all said, and they were off over the clouds towards the earth. Soon they landed on someone's roof. She knew that Santa would slip down someone's chimney in a minute. So she held Santa's arm tight and close with a bound and a slide there they were, right in the middle of a room where there was a fireplace and stockings, all hung up for Santa to fill. It was her own fireplace, for there was Teddy Bear in his chair and Bunny Cat curled up on his cushion in the corner. Little girl turned to thank Santa, but either he had gone very quickly or else she had fallen asleep very quickly, for the next thing she knew, Daddy was holding her in his arms and was saying, What is my little girl doing here? She must go to bed. It's Christmas Eve. And Santa won't come if he thinks you're awake. But little girl knew better than that. 
And when she began to tell him all about how she had flown across the sky and how Santa had given her such a fine ride, Daddy laughed and said, You've been dreaming, little girl. But little girl knew better than that. She smiled to herself happily and went off to sleep. What a nice story. Oh, I wish it happened to me. You never know. It could happen to you if you are good and you believe. Today, I will read you a poem which is about the exciting events that happened one night before Christmas. Ooh, exciting! You've never read us a poem before. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled, all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When, what to my wondering eyes should appear? But a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver, so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be Saint Nick. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the house top, the coursers they flew, with a sleigh full of toys, and St. Nicholas too. And then, in a twinkling, I heard on the roof, the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head, and was turning around, down the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry, his cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings then turned with a jerk and laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his steam gave a whistle and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all and to all a good night. What a wonderful poem. I loved it. Me too. I am glad you did. 
Merry Christmas to all of you. Merry Christmas. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Hidden plants and trees. On the fourth day, God created the sun to shine in the day, the moon and stars to come out at night. One day, Moses went to Mount Horeb with his sheep. There, God appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush. Since there was no room anywhere else, they decided to spend the night in a stable. Here, Mary had her baby, Jesus. She wrapped him in a blanket and put him to sleep. He's got the Lord.